Good, uh, good morning, everyone. I have the honor uh, to, to be here today to speak on behalf of the staff uh, of folks uh, who had the privilege to work uh, with Paul Weicker during his more than 30 years as an elected official serving the people of Greenwich, the 4th Congressional District, the State of Connecticut, and the United States. I had the honor of serving him uh, when he was both a senator and the governor. Whatever role we played for him as a staff, we were proud of all that he did for so many at the local, state, and national level. He burst on the national scene as a young uh, senator during the Watergate. That was just the beginning of his very, very, lifetime, very lifetime of achievements that he, that he achieved. He was an advocate for those who did not have a voice and for those who were marginalized. He championed HIV research, funding for clinical trials and needle exchanges at a time when those with AIDS were outcast. He authored what would become the Americans with Disabilities Act. He championed birth to three intervention. He preserved federal funding for NIH and for his efforts had a building there named after him, as well as funding for NOAA Ocean Research, legal, legal uh, services, and public television. He was an untiring advocate for equal rights and opportunities. He spoke out against apartheid in South Africa and was willing to be arrested for his beliefs. He spoke at Ebenezer Baptist Church on Martin Luther King Day, honoring his efforts on behalf of civil rights for all. As governor, he brought fiscal stability to Connecticut after inheriting the worst budget, in, worst budget imbalance in the nation. Lowell Weicker had a significant impact on me personally. Cloyd and he were there at my wedding to Cindy. They were at the hospital the day after our daughter Courtney was born, and he will always be Uncle Governor Lowell to her. <laughs> he, he recommended me to President Reagan for nomination as the United States Attorney, and he taught me to appreciate a good bourbon. Not with Coke. <laughs> Most importantly, he taught me the respect for our Constitution and our rule of law. It's a lesson that's important for all of us today, and it's a lesson that his words best convey, and I will share them with you. On July 18, 1985, the U.S. Senate was considering legislation to, uh, to provide the President, uh, Reagan at the time, uh, the authority to line item veto budget items. Senator Weicker was vehemently opposed to this proposed legislation. He saw it as an intrusion on our tripartite system of government. His words in debating this proposal reflected his principles and the man he was. He started by observing that at the time, quote, there is one overriding problem confronting this nation. It is the deficit. It is not going to go away by tax reform. It is not going to go away by a line item veto. It is not going to go away by constitutional amendment. It is going to go away by hard choices being made by the President, by members of the House, by members of the U.S. Senate, by Republicans and Democrats alike. He continued that the proposal was, quote, fails on the account of what it will accomplish in terms of the deficit. Now, at least to me, of equal importance, and in some ways of far greater importance, is what this legislation does to our Constitution, to the protections that we all have afforded us by three separate but equal branches of government. There is one item that does not need fixing, and that is the Constitution of the United States. Senator Weicker went on to comment on the years-long debate that he had had with Senator Jesse Helms. Quote, this was the famous court-stripping debate, or as it was phrased by the proponents of the amendment, a debate concerning busing. It was a legislative branch of government trying to impose itself on the judicial branch, in effect saying that we do not like what you decide in this case, the remedy applied by courts to adjudicate discrimination, so we will tell you what you can or cannot do. In this case, you cannot have the remedy of busing. But do not be misled about busing. The precedent to be established was Congress telling the courts of this nation what to do. Lowell Weicker then spoke on the importance of an independent judiciary. When my time comes for justice, I hope that I stand before an independent branch, not one receiving direction from the Senate or from the House or from the President. The rights of all of us as Americans stands to reason, are best protected by three, far better than two, far better than one, three separate but equal branches of government, close quote. It was this independence of judgment that he looked for uh, in those he nominated to the judiciary, many of whom are here today. 
Senator Weicker returned to the need for having the courage to stand up and fight for one's beliefs. Quote, so whether it be court stripping in terms of reducing the powers of the courts, or whether it be a line item veto, which reduces the power of the legislative branch, no such change is called for. What is called for is a good deal more courage and integrity than have been exhibited up to this point in dealing with the deficit. I hope we will come to our senses, understanding that there will be no easy out to the deficit. I hope we come, will come to our senses and make these very hard choices. Lowell Weicker was never afraid to make hard choices and to fight for what he believed in. Consistent with his concerns and advocacy for the marginalized, Senator Weicker spoke about what was at stake if the Congress or President were to limit the independence of the judiciary. Speaking about the school busing debate, he said, maybe in this case it was black school children who were unpopular, so we do not hesitate to go out and tell the courts. Maybe it will be unpopular one day to be old. Maybe it will be unpopular to be retarded. Maybe it will be unpopular to be a middle-class American. I mean, these things change, but the Constitution should not change for that very reason. The courts should stand alone and, it, and stand independent of political philosophy. In conclusion, he said, I do not care whether it's prayer amendments or abortion amendments or line item vetoes or balance the budget amendments. I'm going out on this floor every single time to do everything I can within my physical power to assure that regardless of how, of how dry we are running the well, financially or physically or conceptually in this country, there is one well that remains full to the top for my children and all Americans, and that well is the Constitution. Uh, and Lowell Weicker did to the end everything he could to ensure that our Constitution and rule of law stayed intact, and he fought both tooth and nail for what he believed in. In closing, I want to relate a story about a phone call Lowell Weicker had with President Reagan during the time of the uh, Senate debates, I'm um, sorry, during the time of um, uh, the Iran-Contra sc scandal. Uh, in 1986, the senator spent the evening at my house when he was back in Connecticut campaigning for those on the Republican ticket uh, for whom uh, were up for election. I was the United States Attorney at the time. It was a Friday night. It was in the midst of the Iran-Contra uh, funding scandal. He and I were watching the movie Reds, starring Warren Beatty, about John Reed, an American journalist and communist activist. My phone rang, and I went to the, get at the phone, and I heard a message on the other line saying, this is the White House call for Senator Weicker. Is he here? So I went out, told the senator, and he went to the phone. I heard him talking to President Reagan, saying, this Iran-Contra thing is not Watergate. There is no comparison. I would be happy to speak about that and publicly support him. He hung up, came back into the living room. We turned the movie back on. A second or two later, he laughed and said, I'm sure that President Reagan would not be surprised that I was watching Reds uh, when he called. And in fact, he might have expected it. Thank you, Lowell Weicker, for all you've done for the state, this country, and me.